Hello, good morning. Uh, who was here for the last session? Yeah, I, I don't know. That's kind of a tough act to follow. I'm here to talk about data. So thank you, conference organisers, for setting that uh, disappointment up. But we're going to get through it together and it's all going to be fine. <laughs> so um, I'm here to talk about uh, the current state of measurement, but perhaps more importantly, um, how many of the changes that we've gone through and continue to go through as a society are sort of shaping how we react as brands. Now, just curious to get a sense of the audience. Um, who here in the audience is sort of market, like in marketing or some sort of capacity for, for a brand? Just hands up for me. Couple of people, okay. Uh, agency folks, couple of people, publishers. Everyone else, what, what can I help you with? No, I'm just kidding. Um, good. Well, for, for the brand side, um, you know, we've certainly gone through a huge renaissance in terms of what it means to be a consumer. And it's always been very, very difficult to market directly to consumers and figure out what they want, but perhaps now more so than ever. Um, and really the guts of what I'm going to be speaking about is how we've seen um, sort of consumer activism and consumer empowerment uh, show up, particularly across channels like social media. Um, if you were here uh, just for the last session, there was a question around the Ukraine, but I'm sure many of you have seen what's been happening on TikTok and YouTube and Instagram there. So there's just uh, so much more power shifting back to the consumer. Um, and as with anyone who has ever tasted power, uh, they, they're not going to want it to stop, right? And if anything, they're going to be doubling down. Um, so today we'll be talking a little bit about what some of those trends are and what that actually means from an opportunity standpoint for, uh, for brand marketers. All right. Uh, so three things uh, that we'll be going through. Uh, one, just some facts and figures about what's changed. Two is some of the big headwinds we're seeing from a consumer standpoint when it comes to what they care about and how they're decisioning. Um, and then thirdly, what some of the low-hanging fruit sort of opportunities are um, in terms of how we can react. Um, and I believe we have about five minutes reserved for questions, but feel free to pop in, you know, throughout if you want. It's a nice intimate group so we can uh, make it conversational. All right, uh, so some stats and facts and figures. What's changed, what's stayed the same, and what do we expect will actually stay altered as the world returns back to quote unquote normal, which by the way, is not a real thing. We've been saying that now, like since a couple of minutes, you know, since a couple of months after the pandemic broke, it's not going back, right? Every other day, it's just a question of what's new. Um, but let me start with some big numbers. So. Um, six billion is the number of total social engagements here in the UK year to date, uh, which means six billion moments where a consumer stopped what they were doing on social media, which, by the way, they were on social media, no offence, but not to see your brand messages, right? They were there to, you know, snoop on the person they just met at a bar or online more likely today, right? Because we don't get to go out in the world as much. Um, but something that you did so intrigued them that they interacted with it, shared it with their friends, made a comment, etc. Six billion times. 1.4 trillion uh, page slash video views uh, year to date. 60 billion hours spent online, which is kind of amazing, last year. Um, and the uh, average television set um, is running around 423 shows, right? So there's just a lot of stimulus. Um, you'll see for some of these stats, these numbers continue to grow, but they're sort of growing a lot slower than they were a little while ago. So now really it's about diversification and sort of how we're deciding to, to spend our time. I'm gonna pop through these very quickly. Uh, 51 million people here in the UK uh, visited a social network um, in March. Uh, which is roughly 90% of the population, <laughs> 11.6 billion hours spent on social media. I'm sure it was time well spent, don't worry. Um, and uh, for last year, uh, 22 billion uh, engagements from posts, right? So, and that's just generated by a little north of 7,000 UK brands. So just a staggering amount of moments. What does it all mean? How can we actually make sense of it? 
Um, so now let's talk about uh, the platforms that we're using to consume. Um, so everything here um, is compared versus 2019. Um, and you can see on everything except tablets, um, at least from a unique visitor's standpoint, the total digital population is growing. Mobile audiences are growing, you know, smartphone consumption, desktop tablets is around flat. Um, but we really you know, do continue to find comfort and solace in, in many of these devices. Uh, from a category standpoint, um, we're pretty much up um, across all categories. Some of the big winners have been travel. Uh, fun fact, particularly on social media, it's not who here has taken a trip post pandemic or since? Okay, so a bunch of you have. Brilliant. Um, so in the US, that's not as much of a thing. Um, so a lot of it is like aspirational travel of looking at pictures of places that you'd like to be ready to go to. Uh, but nevertheless, interest in the category, it sort of doesn't upset and offend us as much as it would have around mid to late 2020 to see these sorts of images. Um, and then in terms of, I'm just gonna pop through here, in terms of the actual industry, so this is looking at social media. Um, so, you know, it, the numbers sound big, a lot of it gets attributed back to brands, um, but the big thing that you're seeing here is that a lot of the engagement that is happening on social media is still very centred around what I'm going to call content brands. So, um, you know, sports teams, sports networks, digipubs, uh, as well as magazines, television shows, etc. Um, just a fun fact, if I were to add in influencers here, uh, it would basically shrink this whole pie and influencers would take up about 60 to 70%, right? So um, it's a very content-led ecosystem across social media, which will tie to some of the opportunities that we see around partnerships and sort of, uh, you know, connecting authentically via some of these audience brands. Um, but this is what the breakdown looks like. Um, you know, the categories that we saw across social media continue to grow. Um, you see a lot of similarity from what we saw on the web, um, you know, television networks, uh, you know, people are actually uh, spending much more time with music. Interestingly, a lot of that is like music creation, right? So a lot of people are becoming makers and sort of joining that creator ecosystem. Um, and then some of the other categories that continue to be challenged to gain attention on social media, such as beauty, um, you know, some other things around apparel as well. And a lot of that is also just the shift, right, of the kind of content. Okay, um, and then this is what it's looked like across platforms. So, you know, we're looking at this year on year. You know, Instagram has a little bit over two thirds of all of the activity, uh, Facebook about a quarter, um, and then Twitter sort of holding its, its piece of the universe at around 8%. Uh, we recently introduced TikTok measurement as well. I mean, that's just mind blowing just to see like the sorts of stats that, that are actually happening. Again, it's very focused on the creator economy, um, but social media does continue to grow. And this is looking at engagement. Um, this is looking at fans and followers. So I, I will point out one thing that's really fascinating here is that um, fans and followers for social media had actually become pretty stagnant pre-pandemic. Um, and if anything, in a lot of categories, we were starting to see it decline a little. Um, so this is really notable. Um, and again, what's driving a lot of this growth is interest in creators, in personalities, and sort of in learning more about um, influences from that standpoint. It does, it goes across all categories, but that's sort of what drives it. Okay, um, and then in terms of overall content engagement, and this is for any of you who are actually overseeing specific social channels, um, not all platforms are created equal. Um, just one stat here to sort of point out, you know, across the average brand here in the UK last year, around 11% of all of the creative was posted to Instagram, and that 11% was actually generating over half of all of the consumer activity. So as you're sort of thinking about your content mix and where, uh, you know, where content should go, where attention should go, um, you know, this sort of gives you an overarching framework. And it's a little different by category, but pretty consistent across. 
All right, and of course TikTok, right? So this is looking at it overall for the total digital population. Um, but you know, whereas for other platforms such as Snap and others, um, it became incredibly important for certain like Gen Z or younger demographics, uh, TikTok has very quickly become important across all age demographics. Um, so it really you know, is something to pay attention to and you can see a lot of it play out right here. Okay. Um, oh, and by the way, right, if, if it wasn't sort of, uh, you know, fast moving enough, um, right around three quarters of consumers now say that they will check out a brand's social media page prior to making a purchase, particularly if it's a new brand. Um, so, you know, this is going to lead into, I think, some of this consumer activism that we're about to talk about, um, but it does just become you know, an, an underscore to this idea of, you know, consumers want to know what brands believe in, uh, what they stand for before they want to actually form that relationship. So, you know, that's kind of where, where the situation is. All right, so let's talk about, let's talk about what's going on with the consumer. Um, now, you know, who here, I guess, um, is actively sort of overseeing anything with respect to social media? Just curious in the audience. Okay, so we have a handful of people, excellent. Um, so, you know, I think one of the things that we'll say as we go in, and this is research talking about, you know, we went through huge uh, sea change as a community with the COVID-19 pandemic, everything from the Black Lives Matter movement to, you know, a lot of other social justice movements that um, have essentially played out on social media as well as in the mainstream news. Um, so this next section is designed to sort of speak a little bit to what that's meant in terms of driving change for consumers. Um, so a couple things, right? Um, you know, influencers continue to dominate, as we sort of pointed out in the first section. Um, you know, I mentioned before that we were seeing, you know, low double-digit growth, so 14, 15% across social as a whole. But if we look at this from a perspective of influencers, now you're looking at 82%, 45%, et cetera. So much bigger growth. Um, and what that means, if you compare that to brand growth, the overall um, social media engagement is pretty similar, brands to influencers, but you know, interest in influencers is growing about four times faster um, than it is for the average brand. So you know, for any brand sort of currently doing implementations with creators, this is the reason why. Um, and whether we approve of it or not, like it or not, uh, people trust people, yes, even people that are funded by brand messaging. Um, and I don't know why that is, but there is just a sense of this person is like me, I can relate to them, they feel real, and that's what's driving a lot of this sort of decision making. Um, so what are some of the stats that we saw? Um, so 81% of online shoppers, you know, are amenable to enjoy when a brand actually posts about social issues. Um, if you compare that, now we didn't sort of run this pre-pandemic, but we had different studies that cobbled it together. It was a little less than half prior to the pandemic. Like many, many people felt that brands should just stick to their knitting prior. Now I think people really have gone, hey, no, we want to know how you're active in society, how you're helping your community, how you're contributing rather than just drawing from the community that you sell to and then engage with. Um, you know, here are just a couple of stats around, you know, shoppers will proactively avoid brands that don't align with their values. Um, staggering thing, they say that they are actually willing to pay more. And when we line this up with many purchase studies, we actually see that. Um, so for the first time really in, I think in memorable history, consumers are not only voting with their opinions, but also with their wallets. Um, and then finally that, you know, diversity and inclusion and many of these other topics are top of mind for consumers. Um, and if anyone's sort of interested, we've looked at research that cuts all of the different social issues and how that breaks out by category. Um, but it, you know, again, it's sort of really unavoidable and this idea of like playing it safe is safe by not saying anything and not wanting to offend anyone, um, it's kind of the opposite now. So that's kind of what we're, what we're working through. 
All right, so you have media consumption continuing to grow but more diversifying. You have a consumer who's sort of been given the gavel and been given control and loves it and is expressing that. What does that mean for brand marketers for the opportunities to connect? Because really, ultimately, it's still about connecting meaningfully with a consumer um, and sort of sharing what you value so you can continue to build that trusted relationship. Um, you know, you have media consumption rising um, and then meaningful connections. So here are a couple of ways that it's playing out, particularly on social media. Um, branded integrations have been among the greatest growth format um, that we've seen in the past few years. Here are a few examples. Um, you know, of, of these sorts of implementations, um, Instagram and on Facebook. Um, but this is a great way that many brands are sort of exploring to sort of go, hey, I don't need to create these water cooler moments myself. I can partner with publishers or influencers that are already there and make the most of those as well. Um, and, you know, just to give you a sense, it's still very nascent. You know, it's, ar it's around sort of 10 to 15 percent of all content across all of the formats. On TikTok, it's much lower. Um, it's probably low single digits. So this is not a format that is really well penetrated yet or that consumers have gotten fatigued about yet. Um, you know, and to give you a little bit more of a sense of some of the categories, we've got retail, we've got FMCG, um, gambling and lottery brands, really sort of making use of this format. Um, and then, you know, here are some examples of, of advertisers that we've seen here in the UK um, really sort of explore this format and make the most out of it, um, as well as some of the publishers that have sort of led many of these implementations. Um, so just to wrap up, you know, we have consumer behaviours and attitudes continuing to shift. Um, you know, attention is not the problem, right? We talk about the attention economy, but now it's really about connection um, and how you break through and not just get people's attention, but um, find a way to sort of connect meaningfully. This sort of old paradigm of, you know, I make product, I make ad, ad make you want to buy product sort of doesn't quite play out anymore. Um, it does, you know, to a certain degree, but, but not anymore. The consumer is sort of, again, like we started with, tasted that power and they don't want to give it up, right? They just, they want to help you shape your products. They want their opinions to be heard. Um, and so when you think about that, you know, finding ways to connect meaningfully, either individually as your brand or in partnership with many of those who are already connecting authentically, particularly around these social justice issues, um, is really one of the, the biggest opportunities that there are. Um, and many of the social platforms are really sort of leading with respect to those sorts of implementations. Um, so with that, I'm, I think we have a couple minutes to open for questions, if anyone has anything. Hi, thank you. I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are about how some of those numbers might change, bearing in mind that consumers are now being squeezed on the cost front in terms of gas, electricity, petrol, diesel, everything that we go out and buy. How are you, how are you expecting some of those slides to change over the next six months? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so... I think the way, that, the way that we've seen different social pressures play out on social media is for whatever reason, no matter how stressed, poor, angry we are, we do find ways to express those feelings on social media. So it really goes toward different category and the different type of content. And I'll give you sort of a more concrete example. Um, you know, when the pandemic broke, right? There were some brands that just went dark. They were like, God, I'm just going to disappear, right? Pretend like I don't exist. Um, there were others that just went, no, 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 we're cool. We're just going to keep going as if nothing's happening, right? And then some that went, holy smokes, we have to adapt. We have to find ways to show empathy. You know, we have to show up, but not in the usual way. Um, and those were really the brands that did well because they were going, hey, we know there's this thing that people are going through. Here's how we're trying to help. And they were able to be a part of that conversation. I think 
the biggest losers in that were the brands that just went, no, 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 we cool. Like, I already got these posts. I already paid for them. I'm just going to keep posting because consumers were like, what are you thinking? Like, yeah, there was literally one post that stuck with me. It was hilarious. There's this picture of this woman. It was for a fashion brand. She was like looking really great, like all dressed up. And, and the comments were like, no, stay home. What are you doing? Like, why would you do that in the middle of a, a pandemic? So, so I think that you know, I think that's how you'll see that change is that if consumers and society is going through, like are going through something, then it's the conversation becomes about that, not about whatever you want to show up and talk about. Cool. Any other? Yes. Um, kind of following on, um, you mentioned with consumers saying that they want to spend more money on brands which are mainly more meaningful, more ethical. But on the flip side, we're also seeing, you know, fast fashion brands, some of which have been accused of slavery in the UK, also doing very, very well. Yeah. Do you think there'll be a split between the kind of brands that operate in this meaningful category where they are providing maybe more ethical services and they do stand for something, and then brands which are much more just providing that value proposition for consumers? Uh, I think yes, with one sub bullet is I do think that there will be increasing pressure on the fast fashion brands to at least have an answer for sustainability. And it may not be that they change their production processes or that they stop churning out new looks every other week, but that maybe there's a program that they have for recycling or something around that. Um, I don't think it will be as simple as those brands will be exempted, right? Because it used to be that it was like a small set of consumers that cared about sustainability and others. But I think now there's just such a consciousness raising across the whole category. Um, again, it may not fundamentally transform how those brands operate, but it certainly will impact those. And or the, one, the fast fashion brands that do adapt to that, I think will lead and the ones that don't, they may still be popular across certain things, particularly if pricing is acceptable, um, but they will get that blowback. And you know, that's something that we're already seeing play out in the US where you know, even the consumers that aren't wholly informed about the issue are still demanding to know their stance on it, their approach, what their plans are. Um, and that's really mainstreamed and I don't see that genie going back in a bottle. Perfect. Well, I know we're at time, so thank you, everybody, and I hope you enjoy the, the rest of the day. <laughs>